there's a saying, either it's a hadith or a saying of a scholar, which says that there are, there are different levels of Iman. Iman is the belief, the, 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 uh, the belief that they have in the heart. Yeah. It's, it's, there's different levels. So, would, so for example, if someone, if someone has taqwa in Allah, yeah. has fear of Allah, real fear. When I say fear, I mean he's, he's, he's aware of the consequence of what will happen to him if he commits who, a sin. Who determines these consequences? God determines. Okay, God determines. Okay? So when, when he fears Allah, this is called the taqwa. Okay. The amount of fear, uh, so amount of iman you have, yeah. it, it determines that. So, God is so been, us let me let me finish. Let me finish the point. Here. Yeah. What I'm saying is that a person with taqwa and iman, if he commits a sin, it is as if a mountain has been basically he's, he's carrying a, a weight as a mountain, as no, big as a mountain. A yes, day. and and there are person, there are people whose iman is so low. That even if he's committed a major sin or a sin that is great in the eyes of the, the creator, yes, he just chooses as if there is a fly on his nose. Okay. So that's what I'm telling you. There are different kinds of people. Okay. There are people who are very aware of the sins, so and for them it is a very, ma very major thing, like as big as mountains. And there are people who would just commit sins, like chewing away a fly on the nose. Okay. So in Christianity, it's very different. God doesn't look at any sin as a fly on the nose. Okay. Right. So every sin is major. Every sin is major. Okay. To so God, every sin is a rejection of His law. Right. Every sin is a transgression of His law, and because God is holy, He must punish every sin. Yet that He has given different punishments for different. In, in, in that's for communal purposes. Civil communal purposes. purposes. Yes, civil purposes. Yeah, but that's in from the Old God. Testament, but that's from in God. In the Old Testament, under the Jewish law in the land of Israel, they had certain uh, roles and there were sacrifices for some sins, but not for others, for community purposes. But the Caleb, you know what that tells us? The eternal consequences for any sin is the same according to the Bible, okay. and that is how. What that te forever. what that tells us that the reason the law in the Old Testament are different punishments for different sins. What does it tell you? Well, it tells you that different sins had different uh, impacts on society. No, the different consequences were because the sins were categorized differently. No, that was because they had different effects on society. That's what I'm telling you. The reason God In had different view, consequences, for consequences example, there's the a same. capital offense, then you have capital punishment. But if somebody steals an apple, you are not going to stone them to death, are you? In the Old Testament law. Yeah, according to the Old Testament law, I'd have to, I'd have to because the new that particular dilemma. Yeah. Unfortunately for the New Testament law, you guys have no law. No, because we're There's not no meant to be a civil government. But that's what I'm saying. You as a Christian can never be a, a ruler based on the Bible. Well, no, well, you have to rely on the law of the land yeah. or on the law of the Old Testament. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have a problem with you that. You know what it tells me? I don't have a problem with that. So, there but you still wouldn't consider... It's okay. But you, but if you, but if you were punishing them based on the law of the Old Testament, are you saying you would reintroduce stoning? I have to say, like I said to you before, I'm not sure what I would do. You would reintroduce situation. stoning to death? And I would have to consider it and ponder it if I was... Because this is a major king. thing, you know, but this is David, major. When, when the Old Testament uh, said that when the king, before he was to take the throne, uh, yeah. he was to read through the law, and which implies that he was to think about his role as, as king. Now, if I was to be given the role of a king, I would have to think about that, yeah. and I haven't thought about it, so All I right. can't really answer directly. What do you think of the passages in the Old Testament, which says... Which says that you can be forgiven without the shedding of blood. Um, are you talking about like um, uh, sacrifice and offerings I have not desired? Is that the passage you're referring to? No, not unintentional. Okay, sh show me the. Okay, uh, for example, it says here, uh, there's quite a few actually. This one in 2 Samuel 12 to 13. It says that then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. Yeah, but I think ultimately. He still participated. He still participated in the sacrifices and also the, yearly, stop, stop uh, the yearly day of atonement. Stop raining, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, stop, my hand is paining now. <laughs> hey, he's carrying the umbrella for no reason. Okay, no worries. All right. Thanks. Yeah, so we both are getting old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe I will answer this, answer this, and then we'll call quits. Or yeah. what do you want to do? Do you want to keep going? It's or? entirely up to you. Yeah, I'll just answer this. I can go on until I'm exhausted. No, no. <laughs> and I'll tell you when that happens. Conclusion is this. Conclusion yeah. is this. No, we don't want your conclusion, Torah, Asif. Torah, <laughs> Asif, and Anjil, they all are given by Allah. So He is uh, accusing Allah. By Allah's giving, a, Allah's by a generic giving, word for God, by but giving, let's go on. He doesn't understand that, unfortunately. He is accusing Allah. 
I'm sorry. That, boy. that was on my conclusion, might be yours, but not mine. Um, so, so, what I'm saying is that with regards to David. Why don't you make your statement and yeah. I'll make mine, or do you want me to do mine first? No, no, no what I'm saying, you, can you, before we make the statement, can you respond to that once again? Because I didn't hear your response. Yeah, so, what I'm so say it says here that David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Yeah. Okay, now this is the intentional sin. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And he's, Nathan replied to him, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. Yeah. What does that mean? So I, I would argue that... Um, Take care of your sin and not going to die. Yeah, Explain so, that. So first of all, I would say that um, the immediate consequences, it seems to be just on the top of my head and you reading that, it seems to be that God was going to punish him and kill him, but he decided not to and took away his sin for what reason I'm not shown. But however, I tell the, you? the eternal, you can tell me in a minute, but yeah. the eternal consequences I think would have been covered by the Day of Atonement. No. Described There's no the mention of any sacrifice. Okay? Yeah, but there is always a Do you remember the sin that David committed? The sins. Do you yeah, remember the sin? Adultery, yeah. adultery with Bathsheba? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Who was punishing that? Uh, well, um, I think that um, he does talk about sacrifice being made for him. No, at the end in of that there's no mention of sacrifice. He in was, a, son, in fact, he was forgiven. Yeah, but but in, instead him, of him, who was punished? Do you remember? It does say that a plague was come out upon each, uh, from Israel. Was no. that something like that? Tell me what it is. His wives were punished. Plural wives really? were punished. Yes, sure and his child was that. killed. Oh, the son died. Yeah, the yes. son died. And yeah. his wife. I don't know if his son was. Punished. And he, and you know what? Oh, his wife. Can... God in the in that passage. Read yeah, I'll read, read the passage. God in that passage said, "You have committed the sin in secret, the sin of adultery. Yeah. But I will make. Basically, your your wife should be punished in this in the way. Okay, I'll read the passage. No problem. So. I was thinking of a open thing that he did. Open Second Samuel twelve thirteen. I can't. I got. You want? Let me open the Bible. Right? Okay. Let me get my phone. Second, Second Samuel 12, did you say? Yeah. Let me bring up the passage about David sinning. Uh, it's kind of old, isn't it? Verse what? Okay. Out of your own household, I'm going to bring calamity upon you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give yeah, them to that's one. one. Yeah, so the punish. So carry on, carry on reading. Just, just read it. Read it. Yeah, so before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you. That was his son Absalom. Mm -hmm. um, and he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You, you did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before Israel. Yeah. Yeah. What do you make of that? Do you think that is fair to punish his wives for his sin? And he's forgiven? Well, he's not punishing his wives. Well, it's, it's a punishment. why are the, why, the punishment is why, upon him because why is God, somebody else is sleeping with his wives. Exactly. So who's getting punished? Him or the wives? Him. And not the wives? No, they probably did it willingly. <laughs> How do we know they didn't do it? Willingly? Are you saying David's wives were adulteresses? I don't know. Oh my God, these guys are crazy. No, honestly, you I'd would go to any that. length to. But I'd have to think about that passage. No, no, it says one. it says very clearly. Yeah, it's a good passage. Have to think it about says it. very clearly yeah. that I will make the people close to you sleep with your wives yeah. in broad daylight. Yeah. Okay. And if you yeah, think that is, if you think his wives were whores and they were they were yeah, they were adulterous, no, there's nothing to think. It's very clear that, bro. No, there's always okay? there. There will be an answer. And then it goes on to say. <laughs> that he will kill his child as well. Do you think it's fair on the child and the wives? Well, it's not like the child. The, was it born? Was it still born? No, I think it was born. Regardless, God specifically says the reason your child died is because of this punishment. Yeah, look, it's Do you think that's fair? It's definitely a punishment for him, whether or not I know it's a punishment. Look, I'm yeah. not saying it's not a punishment for him as a moral, sorry, as him being suffering uh, mentally. Mental is a, is a mental trauma for him, yeah, it would yes, be, yeah. but not a physical punishment. Yeah. Okay. Shall we agree on that? Yeah, sure. Good. So his his wives were basically thrown into adultery, and his child was killed. Yeah. But he was not touched yeah. physically. His wives were physically punished. His child was physically punished, but he was not physically punished. So, he was yeah, only ment mentally maybe think, uh, traumatized by that. Um, he. Um, he definitely was a punishment for him. Whether or not it was a punishment for them, I would have to think about and okay. have to look at. And you know what? David was actually forgiven. He was, he, it says here, the Lord has taken away your sin. Taken yeah. away your sin means you're forgiven. Yeah. And then he says, 
you but are not going to die. Remember, yeah. you are not going to die means not going to die. Huh? He, he didn't mean obviously in a physical death, yeah. but spiritually not going to die. Yeah. And that only happens to people whose sins are forgiven. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, and there's no mention of any sacrifice here. Well, yeah, but there is always the Day of Atonement in Leviticus 16, which would have been covering all of the sins. What, the Passover? No, Leviticus 16. No, not the Passover. That's, is that's that for intentional sin or unintentional sin? All sin. So, but hold on. You're when, when we say, when we so say, you're telling me for... Yeah, but when if we somebody, say intentional sin and unintentional sin, if yeah. you're using the biblical classification of what that is... Yeah, Leviticus that, 14, I believe, yeah? yeah when it talks about the numbers, unintentional... Numbers 15. No, Leviticus 14 as well, when it talks about the sacrifices for the unintentional sins. That's, Levit that's Numbers 15, I think you're talking about. And Leviticus 40. Okay, yeah. anyway, what I'm saying is this. In this passage... Yeah, look, okay, honestly, I have to think about that. Ho hold passage, on. Yeah. Earlier, remember I asked you what will happen to an adulteress, and yeah. you said it will be stoned to death? Yeah. So if I asked you, if somebody commits an adultery in the time of David... If God decreed for him to be forgiven, then that, that's... Let me finish. Story. Let me finish. If someone committed adultery in the time of David, and David is the king... He was a king, right? Yeah. David was a king, yeah. and he would rule by the law of God. Yeah, the punishment is death. The punishment is yeah. stoning by death. Yeah, definitely. However, when David himself did it, yeah. the king, yeah. he was forgiven. Yeah, but that's and to me, God that is the greatest injustice of God. If God wants to forgive, he can. I, is God being unjust here or not? Well, no, because the always forgiveness is always on the basis of the atonement. No, no, yeah. there's no atonement here. Yeah, it, he was it forgiven. Might not be mentioned there, but there is always the so general just, atonement so, over all so of So David's sin. wives were punished, his child was punished, but he wasn't punished. Look, do you not see that passage? You have I'm read it to yourself. Sit here and discuss this you, you have read it yourself. If you go home and uh, you can look it up. Earlier, I told you that Allah, if He wishes to forgive someone, He can forgive someone. Yeah, but now you have agreed. Yes, if it is, if God had decreed it, then it will happen. So, so you, in Leviticus fact, wait, 16, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, Caleb, Caleb. When I brought the passage from the Bible, when the passage respond. came to the Bible, you immediately said, if God had decreed for him to be forgiven, he's forgiven. Yeah. I'd and like you have no respond. issues with that. Yeah, I'd like that is exactly what the Muslims believe. Yeah, I know, but I'm Alhamdulillah. Not saying that, that forgiveness is given independent of the atonement system that was well, there. Unless you can prove Israel. to me atonement here is mentioned. Uh, Leviticus 16 is very clear that every single year not there was for an atonement for all of not the adultery. Sins. Yes, adultery, adultery means punishment adultery by that, by stoning. Yes. It's very clear. Yeah, but there's still an atonement for it. There's still an atonement. So, you, so the you're telling me when God says the punishment for adultery is stoning to death, you're telling me. Kill it, kill it. Hold on. Are you telling me that, that if somebody commits adultery during the time of David, they should not be going based on the Old Testament law, or they should be going based on the, with regards to the consequence of adultery? Yeah. So I would say that. First of all, and if I'm allowed to reply to you without interruption. Yeah. So first of all, when it, the sacrifices always were a representation of what Jesus did on the cross for us, right? And it says that he was crucified before the foundation of the world. So before the foundation of the world, God always had the intention of Jesus taking the punishment for our sins. Yeah. All these sacrifices unjust, yeah. pointed to that. The sacrifice of the Old Testament pointed to that. Leviticus uh, 16, as I said, was a general atonement for the sins of Israel and anyone else who wanted to join themselves to Israel. And that covered all sins. So any basis that God would forgive David was based upon what Jesus would have done on the cross in the future. Okay. So, uh, because that's what the sacrifice... So can we apply that same ruling for all the adulteresses during the time of the Old Testament law? If they repented before they were executed, because the, when we talk about the stoning to death, yes. that's the civil law. Based on, the, based on God or, or based, based on, on God? God has decreed, okay. has decreed that to be the civil law. Right? Has, was so, it to be applied or not to be applied? Well, if the general rule was that, for to be, was that it would be applied, but if God intervened, then God was allowed to intervene. Okay, so if God decreed someone in Islam to be forgiven, that's okay, right? No, not without the basis of atonement. Why if do you have the double second, standards? Just now you said it's okay. Hang on, if you're talking about from the punishment of being stoned, then I guess that's okay. fine for God to intervene for a person. That. But if you're talking about the eternal consequences of the adultery, no. But you told me sin is so severe that it cannot be forgiven except by the shedding of blood. That's correct. That's what you were earlier. Yeah. But now hang David on, but now on. David think, is forgiven I'm without the shedding of blood. Where you're misunderstanding us. Let me no, you're telling me that the sin that was in the uh, done by in the temple was for every so, sin including the ones which were major sins. So just, would that include so murder just as well? Your point, just state your point again. Okay, my point is this. Sins which are major, capital sins or sorry, capital offenses according to the Old Testament law means capital punishment. Okay. 
right? For example, if yep. you commit, if you so commit murder. We're talking murder, about the civil law here. We're not talking about eternity. No, I'm talking about the law of God. No, we're talking about whether the civil, you call it civil law, whether you call law it, of God that it's a law of God. Administered in Israel. Regardless, it's the law of God. Okay. It's a command from God. Yeah, but okay? we're talking about the punishment. When we're talking about the punishment, we're talking about the civil law that God instituted in the kingdom of Israel. Yeah, right? where David was. So we're not talking about where the David eternal was. consequences of sin. No, I'm talking, yes, I'm talking, about, obviously, I'm talking about the worldly consequences. Okay. I'm not talking about the consequences after the day of judge, okay. judgment. Let's get that clear. Yes, so that's clear. So if somebody committed a crime like murder, yep. yes, can they just sacrifice an animal and get away with it? Okay, not under the um, Mosaic law? Yes. No. If they commit adultery, can they commit? Can they just sacrifice an animal and get away with it? No, they would have to be stoned to death. That's the okay, answer. and that is my question. Why was David not stoned to death? Because God intervened. Which means God is able to forgive without the shedding of blood. Okay, if, if we're talking about um, civil law, right, the punishment, God is able to, to pardon someone from the punishment and, and not give them that stoning to death that they deserve under the civil law, God is able to do that. If we're talking about the eternal consequences of sin, God is not able to do that. He okay. has declared very clearly that he is requiring All right. let's read. Let's read Ezekiel 33 because that yeah. goes against what he just said. Okay. It says here, and if I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, but they then turn away from their sin and do what is just and right. If they give back what they took in pledges for a loan, return what they have stolen, follow the decrees that give life and do no evil. Is there anything about adultery in there? Murder. Hold on. That person will surely live. They will not die. So you know where this says live and die? This is about the eternal. This is, well, yeah, this is sure about, that's why I told you about David, when he says, there. when Nathan told David that your sins are forgiven yeah. and that you will not die, it's talking about the eternal death. No, no, it's not. So you're telling me David didn't die? No, he died eventually, physically. But he, what so what, when he about, says you will not die, means what? I think it's talking about the context of being stoned for adultery. No, I don't think you, be, you understand that. You I'm do not, not realize that, that when he me. says you will not die, just like in Ezekiel, he says you will surely live. And in Ezekiel, it's not about David. It's a, it's a generic statement. Yeah, God but saying, about adultery God is there. saying that if you if you have I, actually, have the if they give Ezekiel back what they well, took as a pledge, so for example, if they broke a pledge and they gave it back, or they took a loan and they gave it back, and if they're stolen and they've, uh, they've uh, given it back and they do no evil, that person will surely live. They will not die. None of the sins of that person committed will be remembered against them. They have done what is just and right. They will surely live. Yeah, but the context there... This is eternal. Yeah, but... Not, yeah, not, a, not a communal. So, so... The yeah, context is that they that can passage, ask God for repentance. Let me talk, or, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, let me talk. Go on, talk. So, whenever there is forgiveness in Israel, yeah. right, there is always the overshadowing uh, issue that Christ, uh, there were sacrifices for sins, that there was the Day of Atonement for all sin, which which pointed to what Jesus would do, which was for every sin. Jesus died on the cross for all our sins. So Jesus wasn't there. So, Ezekiel so, time. Yeah, I know, but it was always foreshadowed by the sacrifices of the Old. No, it's not. Pointing forward it's to not. Christ. That was animal so sacrifice. This is human like, sacrifice. Jesus himself, Can't be foreshadowing. Jesus himself, he said, Jesus himself said that um, the Passover is near. And Lamb of God. Know, is the meat. Is that animal? Seriously, Jesus, man, come on. Jesus says that, as you know, the Passover is near and the Son of Man will be handed over and will be crucified. He says that. Jesus so didn't die on the Passover day. No, he did, actually. Oh, sorry, he didn't pass. The one you're talking about is Yom Kippur. He didn't, he didn't die on yeah. the Yom Kippur. No, but no, I'm the, the ones about the animal sacrifices? I just quoted Jesus. I yes. just quoted Jesus. Well, you Passover, mentioned Passover, that's why. Because all these sacrifices pointed to what Jesus was going to do on the cross. It's not, and actually. so whenever there's forgiveness in the Old Testament, it's not just on the basis of God pardoning without any justification. Let me ask it's you. It's always on the basis of what Jesus no, did. On it the is cross. pardoning of David clearly. No. Your sins will be forgiven and read, you will live. Fact, Sorry, you will read, not die. In fact, when you read, and, and yeah, when you read that passage in uh, yes. where, he's, where he writes the psalm about his forgiveness and he says that uh, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but uh, a contrite, a broken and a contrite, uh, broken spirit and a contrite. Oh, but I wasn't talking about that. I, I was know, talking but, about his adultery. But he, he, at the end of that passage, he says, "Then I will offer a sacrifice." So he clearly offered a sacrifice for his sin. Not for the Bathsheba. Right? No, he did. Where? He did. Where? Um, okay, Where did he? But the thing, are you saying he was forgiven before the sacrifice? No, no, he was.